Hey everybody, I'm here today to talk to you about nine things to think about when buying a new car. In this video, I'll be going over nine things to consider and keep in mind when you're buying a new car. And you should actually be considering these things before you buy a new car because they should be guiding the purchasing process. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the nine things. Number one, price. You should be considering the price of the car. And when you're considering the price of the car, you should be keeping in mind a few things. First and foremost, um, can you actually afford the price? And be honest with yourself. You wanna think critically. Can you actually afford the price of that car? And also you wanna be thinking about, is that price worth it for that car? Because you can have the exact same car, and for some people it will be overpriced, for others it will be underpriced, and for others it will be just right. So think about it, is the car, is the price of that car either underpriced to you, so you think it's worth more than that, or worth it? You don't wanna buy a car that you think is overpriced, because then you're gonna think that you're gonna be getting ripped off, and you're probably not gonna be as happy with the purchase. All right, moving forward. Number two, negotiate. Have you negotiated enough? Is there any more negotiation room? Now negotiating is a great thing to do, but it does take time. If you want a car quickly and effectively, you can walk into a dealership, pay full price for the car, and they'll probably get you the car as quickly as humanly possible. On the other hand, if you negotiate, you might have to extend the, the, the actual process of purchasing the car over a week or two weeks or even longer and it might take them a little bit longer to get you that exact car that you want because they have other people that are going to be paying more and paying full price that aren't negotiating so just think about negotiation do you want to dedicate some time to negotiating and lowering the price i would recommend that you do so and if you do have you negotiated as low as you possibly can or is it worth it to keep negotiating a little bit more number three insurance now when you buy a new car, your insurance is gonna be changing because you're gonna be insuring a different car than your old car, or if you didn't have a car before, you're gonna be insuring this car, you know, a car for the first time. So with that being said, you wanna call your insurance company and get a good, reliable quote for that car because you don't want to buy a car and you know that in your mind you can afford insurance of let's say $200 a month but then you go buy the car and you get the insurance and it's let's say $500 a month you don't want any surprises especially when it comes to finances so just call your insurance company and get a good reliable quote so you know what the insurance is going to cost you and also know what the coverage is for that specific car Moving forward, number four, maintenance. Now, you want to think about the maintenance of this new car that you're going to be buying. Now, like I said, most maintenance on most cars is going to be very, very similar to one another. But with that being said, there are certain cars and certain types of cars that require uh, higher costs with regards to maintenance and more maintenance in general. So more appointments for maintenance. So you just wanna know what you're getting into. I mean, if you're gonna be spending uh, $300 a year in maintenance, then you wanna know that in advance. If you're gonna be spending $3,000 a year in maintenance or even more, then you just wanna know that in advance. So figure out what the maintenance is with regards to how many times you're gonna be bringing the car in for maintenance and anything that you might have to do yourself. And also you wanna actually figure out how much it's gonna cost you, okay? And some manufacturers and dealerships will offer included maintenance for the first couple of years of buying a car. So ask the manufacturer or the dealership um, if they're gonna be offering that to you and and if they're not offering it, then maybe try and negotiate it into the deal so you can get a couple free oil changes or something like that. Number five, warranty. When you purchase a new car, you are gonna be given, most likely given the option of a warranty, um, an extended warranty. Now you have to figure out if it's worth it for you. Now chances are the longer the warranty or the more in depth the warranty that you get, the more it's gonna cost you. But it has the potential to save you more money in the long run if you encounter some possible repairs. And it also gives you the peace of mind. So just look at the warranty options and think about, you know, is it worth it for you? It comes down to that. I can't give a, a one single answer for everybody that will work for everybody. You have to figure out if it's worth it for you. So look at the warranty, figure out how much it costs you and just figure out if it's worth it for you. So at least you're educated and in, in the warranty and at least you're making an educated decision. Number six, trade in or selling your old car. Now, if you're buying a new car and you have an old car, which is the case a good portion of the time, 
then you wanna figure out, are you gonna trade it into the dealership or are you gonna sell it privately or are you just gonna keep the car, you know, to keep as a winter beater or something like that? Or if it's a sports car, are you gonna keep it for like a, a weekend car or something like that? With that being said, you just wanna know what you're getting into once again. If you're gonna trade the car into the dealership, make sure that you negotiate that trade-in price separately from the price of purchasing your new car. You don't want them to work in the deals together because then, you know, the numbers might be mixed in. They might be increasing your trade-in value, but then also they're not giving you as much of a discount or as much negotiation room on the new vehicle. So you want to, you know, organize them as separate deals. The trade-in uh, value of your car and then the purchase of your new car. If you're selling it privately, you want to make sure that you know the process for selling your car privately. And if you're keeping the car, then you want to make sure that you have the room and the finances for the added insurance and so forth for keeping the car. Number seven, length of ownership. How long do you plan on owning this new car for? Now I've met people that uh, plan on owning a new car for 20 years. They buy a new car and they're gonna they plan on driving it for 20 years and that's all there is to it or until it no longer runs. And I've met other people that buy a new car and plan on driving it for three years or four years or five years. And you know, they, they have no problem sort of eating that depreciation cost. So it's up to you. You just have to work out financially what's the best bet for owning a car for a certain period of time. And then you wanna work out the finances with that deal, okay? Number eight, room. This is a, a big important factor to consider. Room, cargo space, and just space in general. With the car, does it have enough room? Like I said, I've met people who purchase vehicles that have way more room than they need, and I've met people that purchase vehicles that buy cars that are nice and sporty and super small, and then they realize, wow, they can't fit their hockey bag in the back seat or their golf clubs or whatever the case is, you know, or their kids, whatever the case is. So with that being said, I would recommend before you buy the car, bringing everything with you that you're gonna regularly be keeping in that car. If you play hockey three nights a week, bring your hockey bag, throw it in the car that is in the showroom and just make sure that it's gonna fit. Also, when you take the car for a test drive, you know, you wanna make sure that it fits everyone that you might potentially be bringing around with you and everything that you might be bringing around with you and also, you wanna make sure that you feel comfortable driving and make sure that you have enough room as a driver. Now I'm five foot seven and a half, so I'm not that tall. But if I was really tall, if I was much taller, then I would look at the headroom that I had in the car. Now obviously, like I said, because I'm only you know five foot seven, not only five foot seven, but because I'm not that tall, I have lots of room in every car that I drive. But if I was a little bit taller, that would be a huge factor for me to consider. And last but not least, number nine is financing. You wanna make sure that you know financially what you're gonna be doing. Now you have many options. You can buy a car outright. You can finance a car over many different terms. Um, you can also get a car loan separate. So you can finance it through the bank or you can finance it through the dealership. You can lease a car. There are so many different options, but just make sure you know what you're getting into uh, with regards to financing. What are you? What's your plan for financing the car? Or financially, even if you're buying the car outright, what's your plan financially for actually taking that car home with you? And that's basically it. In this video, I've gone over nine things to think about when buying a new car. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down below as a comment. What are some other things to think about when buying a new car? Let me know as a comment down below. And of course, be sure to subscribe for more great car and driving videos just like this one. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.